With the holiday season upon us, the end of the year is approaching, of course, and CBS polling wanted to ask Americans if they are happy with what's going on in their lives. So for more on this, let's go to CBS News Executive Director of Elections and Surveys, Anthony Salvanto. Good to see you. Ed, good to see you guys. How are you? So uh, let's talk about this poll. Uh, no is politics the, today. Yeah. Is there any good news? Are people saying that they are happy? There's no, there's no politics in this, and I'll explain why that is. But look, we talk all year about the problems Americans tell us about, how they, what's wrong with the country, et cetera. So I just wanted to ask them, OK, what's going well, right? And it turns out that, yes, a majority of Americans are happy. If not very That's happy, good. then fairly happy. So here's some good news as we get to the end of the year. And then we say, OK, what's going well? What makes you happy? And maybe this isn't a surprise, but let's say it. It's family above all else, right? It's family above all else. In fact, but I here, like that mental health is pretty high, too, because yeah. we've been talking a lot about people struggling with their mental health throughout the pandemic. So maybe this is, you know, another good news story. It is a majority. Now, it's not everyone. So mm -hmm. to your point, there are going to be rough spots out there, but that is up there. Physical health, if folks are, you know, lucky enough to have it, then then that's on the list as well. As, and things in leisure pursuits and activities, and that sort of dovetails with people saying that they want to spend more time with family, want to take more time for themselves if they can. But look at this, because, you know, we pollsters, we have to run across that, right? You got to dig a little deeper. So we do this. When things are going well with your family, you're a lot more likely to say that you're happy. Yeah. And that's what's connected. It's not po politics. It's not even as much money. That's the thing that, that connects it for people. So we can say it. I love that. So I know we're not talking politics, but we have talked a lot about politics um, over the years, Anthony. And as you know, it's like there's a perpetual divide, like almost every topic we talk about, there's kind of like it's almost a 50 50 split. Do people feel like we can get along? A lot of them do. Okay. So there's another bit of good news, right? Um, people feel like they can inherently get along, but politics drives them apart. And so that is is given by 61%. And there's another four in 10. As I know, people inherently don't get along. But let's focus on that majority yeah. part, right? Because look, <laughs> the holidays are coming up. You're going to gather with family. A lot of folks are. You're going to have to talk about this. But just to be on the safe side, people say they're going to try to avoid talking politics. And maybe that all connects, right? Mm -hmm. They want to get along and Maybe they maybe they're gonna not do that. But this this is the other thing that that sort of jumped out to me. Okay, what promotes understanding? What promotes division? Mm -hmm. And you get this big number that thinks that social media now is promoting a lot of division. But there's big age splits on that because the younger people who use it more, uh, half of them think it promotes more understanding. Right? It connects different viewpoints, different people. But Older folks who are less likely to use it say that's what's that's what's causing all the divide. That's fascinating. I, I find that really fascinating. Although it's not surprising no. because at the end of the day, uh, if you take away the noise from media, whether it's social media or legacy media, you take that away from uh, playing too large of a role in anyone's life, then they find happiness in personal connections, either with their family mm -hmm. or their friends or their loved ones or their colleagues, mm -hmm. um, their classmates. I think when you inject now media, and I'm pointing the finger at us too, yeah, uh, that you are now injecting some of the things that seem to drive people apart. And I think if we can get to a place where people, even if you disagree politically or disagree ideologically, but you can sit down at a table together and break bread and have a conversation, then we're, we're doing okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. then we're doing okay. Definitely. And that's what these numbers seem to reflect. Yeah. And people realize, and there's a lot of studies on this, when you engage with someone, including someone of different views, you start to see a lot more commonality. You yeah. start to find that commonality or at least an understanding, even if you disagree with with somebody whereas if it's just you know it's just a tweet or it's just a bit of vitriol that sort of comes over social media you're so distant from I think that. what you know if you, you guys probably I've been talking about this movie Origins the new Ava DuVernay movie which is mm -hmm. based off of the book cast and there's a there's a really great scene in it where Nick Offerman plays a guy who's wearing a make America great again hat and uh, Anjanou Ellis is playing uh, Isabel Wilkerson the writer who's black who wrote cast and at first when they see each other just based on how they perceive each other there's friction and tension but once they start talking about their family 
families, they both lost their parents, and they see each other as human beings. It doesn't matter that he's wearing a MAGA hat. It doesn't yeah. matter that he may not agree with her politically. They come together mm -hmm. as human beings. That's exactly yeah. what, what Anthony's saying. This strikes me as the kind of poll, Anthony, that people would like to participate in. I know sometimes you're asking people very uncomfortable questions. <laughs> yeah. I'm just wondering about the feedback for this. Was it easy to get people to, you know, weigh in on this stuff? Well, you know what? Both can be because sometimes people, let's face it, they get really passionate about politics, right. too. But yes, the chance to do this and just talk about what matters to you and what's what it's close to you. Yeah. Um, it's probably not an accident that we found also that by almost by about two to one, people do say they're more hopeful than discouraged That's going good. forward about the future. And look, to the other point, people recognize when they tell us that there's also an entire group of folks out there, including politicians and political, you know, campaigns that have a vested interest in making sure that people mm. see the other side mm -hmm. as something to be feared, as something to, to go against because we often see that it's not just what they're voting for, it's what they say they're voting against. And so there's that force acting upon them in what they see and what they're fed and maybe there's a little bit of, of resistance to that because they know it's it's out there. That's really interesting. Um, Anthony, great conversation. Uh, it's always good having you here, but this is a really nice topic to talk about. Thanks Thank for you letting so me, much. Thanks for letting me do it.